Hey, this is Venk. Um, as you know, I'm here at ASAP, uh, just catching up with great research and friends and amazing colleagues. Um, my phone died before I could catch up with a really good friend of mine, Dr. Zach Susi, and he had a great presentation that I wanted to be able to engage with, and he was wonderful enough to say that he would sit down and go over it with me. So, Zach, thank you so much. For those who don't know you, do you mind introducing who you are, and then we can hear a little summary of your, your work? Yeah, my name is Zach Susi. Uh, I'm an emergency phys physician at Dartmouth Health, uh, and my area of interest is artificial intelligence and uh, device design. Uh, so, uh, and you're a sonographer? I'm a sonographer. I did a fellowship at UC Davis uh, in Amen. ultrasound. Uh, I am the interim vice chair of research at Dartmouth Health uh, in the emergency department. Uh, I'm the system wide co chair. Uh, division director of ultrasound and director of our ultrasound fellowship. And there is water underneath him. He kind of walks. He's on like a walking treadmill, so he can walk on water too. Uh, he's pretty amazing. He You're really too is. Kind. He really is amazing. <laughs> so, tell us about your work, Zach. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, I've been involved with a, an engineering firm, uh, Criari, for quite some number of years, uh, since 2017. Uh, and we have several SBIR contracts uh, with the uh, USAMRDC, which is... Uh, is that the, USAMRID? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's yeah. a great acronym. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, really the uh, branch of um, Army Medical Research. Uh, and they're... they're trying to develop and, um, uh, I guess, improve the uh, number of businesses that are uh, working on critical problems uh, in military uh, care, forward operating combat care. So uh, pneumothorax uh, is a very common combat injury. Uh, and pneumothorax uh, is, uh, or thoracic trauma is a common combat injury and pneumothorax uh, is of, often a result of that. Uh, tube thoracostomy is one of the most common uh, surgical minor surgical procedures that's done in the field. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, tension pneumothorax can cause obstructive shock and death. Uh, but it's quite avoidable if you have needle thoracostomy, finger thoracostomy, or uh, put in a chest tube. P, uh, 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 pneumothorax is really difficult to uh, diagnose, uh, especially in polytrauma, uh, in these uh, live combat situations. Uh, physical exam and, and vital signs aren't specific or sensitive for uh, any one injury, and needle decompression is um, often unsuccessful. So the military really wants the development of an automated battlefield solution for tension pneumothorax that can be used by minimally trained combat medics and promotes both procedural success and avoidance of complications. Uh, this is their exact quote from their solicitation uh, that we applied for uh, several years ago. So uh, many of you are familiar with you know, uh, pneumothorax and uh, reasons which uh, it may f uh, needle decompression may fail, uh, but the needle may hit some ribs. Uh, it may be in the cardiac box, and uh, unfortunately, hit vasculature, create a complication. Um, the chest wall can be quite thick. Uh, five percent of folks will have a chest wall greater than five centimeters. Five centimeters being a common length for a, a thoracostomy needle. Uh, as well, there can be kinking, repositioning, um, inadequate flow because of clotting. Uh, so we proposed a handheld device that would visual, help with visualization uh, and guide operators to the intercostal space using ultrasound. Uh, this would help avoid critical structures uh, and then possibly ensure that uh, we could drive a needle to an effective and safe depth uh, for needle decompression. So the, uh, we use spiral development uh, for the device uh, that has multiple components. Uh, first is the electromechanical actuator, uh, which uh, is the drive system for the needle. Uh, we developed a needle cartridge, which you can see on the right, uh, which houses commercial off-the-shelf 12 and 14 gauge needles. It's a robust interface with the uh, driver. Uh, we use Raspberry Pi for the uh, touch screen. Uh, an Interson ultrasound and the SDK uh, that allowed us to interact with the ultrasound, not just 
uh, the standard um, presets that, that these uh, ultrasounds typically come with. Uh, and then it, there are embedded batteries, so it lasts approximately two hours uh, using the needle, say, every 10 or 15 minutes. Um, this is what the device looks like. It's got two uh, buttons here. Uh, one drives uh, the needle down, one will retract the needle. So what we did, uh, we had uh, three swine over six sessions, uh, and we brought them into the operating room. Uh, I, under, under ultrasound guidance, inserted a, a seven French pigtail catheter, instilled about a liter of air, and created a pneumothorax. Um, this pneumothorax was confirmed on x-ray ultrasound and by pleural manometry. We then used the device to uh, identify an intercostal space. Uh, the swine were quite old uh, and large and their skin was very thick. So oftentimes we needed to do a little skin nick with a, an 11 blade scalpel. But I would select a depth, uh, activate the device, uh, and then uh, our primary outcomes were confirmation of needle decompression by easy aspiration of air with a 60cc syringe uh, and measurement of the needle depth to assure that we are selecting a depth and it was in fact reaching that depth. Uh, and this is uh, the graphical user interface, we call the GUI, uh, that demonstrated uh, where the uh, needle started and then where it would go and we would see this on the screen so we knew when we reached our end destination. We were approved for uh, 10 sticks per hemithorax and uh, the pigs uh, actually were survived uh, for a second with the chest tubes in place and Heimlich valves um, to be repeated times one. So results, uh, we broke this into really the three pigs, uh, two sessions each. Uh, the first, uh, using our sort of spiral development model, um, we had a 56% success. Uh, we felt as though we would be able to puncture the skin, uh, but that was not the case, so we needed to do some skin nicks. 34% uh, had skin nicks, uh, and 22% had no skin nick that were actually successful. Um, we identified that the needle cradle would crack uh, and needed to be more robust, uh, and we went from a stepper motor to a servo motor uh, because it's uh, got more tor torque and also uh, a higher velocity. Uh, in our second swine, uh, sessions three and four, uh, 2A and 2B, uh, we had a 71% success. Uh, again, 61% uh, used a skin nick, 10% did not. Uh, and we did increase the gauge of the needle, um, decrease the gauge of the needle, increase the size of the needle uh, to a 12 gauge, thinking that that would help us get through the skin. Um, and it did not help us really puncture the skin any better, which was really quite calloused and hard. Um, the failures were primarily because it would get stuck on the edge of our skin neck, uh, and then trajectory would be into the rib. For our third session, we had uh, um, one swine, five and six, uh, session five and six. We had a 90% success rate. And you can see in 3B here, we had a 100% success rate once we were using the skin neck. We uh, plotted out all of our uh, uh, chosen uh, depths and then actual depths, which were measured. Uh, and they were mostly within one millimeter, which was really within the um, margin of error for eyeball estimations with our ruler. One was over two millimeters. Again, it may have been hard to estimate uh, visually. So uh, our conclusions, the A-need accurately and safely can deploy a 12 gauge, uh, eight centimeter thoracostomy needle to desired depth through skin-necked epidermis uh, on the swine model. It does provide an effective conduit uh, for pneumothorax decompression, um, visualization and avoidance of critical structures. Uh, and then we did see that it was inconsistent in puncturing the intact uh, swine epidermis. We are uh, arranging for uh, an internal research development uh, grant, so that way we can potentially test this in human cadavers. Uh, because the skin was very, very difficult to get through. And we anticipate that on humans, it, it wouldn't be a, an issue, uh, which we ran into. So 
that is the presentation bank, uh, and that's the device that we've been working on for a couple of years. That's really cool. Thank you yeah. so much. I'm sorry I missed the live one. Yeah. I'm glad that I could take get another live version. Thank you so yeah. much, Zach. Yeah, no problem at all, Bank.